Hey, it's me, little Frenchie, and today I'm going to teach you how to do this hummingbird. As you can see, I've done several of them again. I try to do that with every tutorial. Each of these hummingbirds came out different, but beautiful in their own way. They'll be fun to give away as gifts, make people happy. You can check it out on my Facebook page and my Instagram. I have pictures of all the hummingbirds will be up on there for you to take a look at for your own reference. This is the video that I did. I'm doing it backwards again. I painted it and now I'm doing my intro so you know what you're getting yourself into. Supply list four by six and it's taped down around the edges um, on, on the um, mat that I have. If you don't wanna do that, that's fine. This one's pretty easy where it won't matter if you tape down just because we're not getting a lot of this edges wet it's mostly just staying focused on the inside so if you don't want to tape it down I tape it down for my videos just so it's easier for you and doesn't fly around and go crazy and you're having a hard time seeing what we're doing so this is the painting that I did and it's a little hummingbird um, you know my brushes that I like to use all right here we go we know what it is a round number eight and around number four. Every time, I think like these are just my go-to brushes. Like, play with other brushes, I use them. I have like a whole big canister of brushes, but these are the ones that just really stick by and I, I just learned how to use them. And part of that reason is, is I wanna have a portable on the go and be able to do every, paint anything that I wanna paint and not struggle. And so I've learned to really utilize these brushes in all of my paintings. Okay, so the colors, I'm, a f my favorite is to use the least amount of paint as possible. Now, when you're painting, please be aware they don't have to be the exact same paints. You could, whatever hue that you're comfortable with, um, but I just know some people like to um, be very exact when they're doing videos or tutorials or learning things, and so I'm telling you what I'm using, but when I was learning, um, sometimes my teachers I wouldn't have the same colors or anything that they had and so I would just use whatever I had available because I didn't want to have to buy a, a million different hues. Um, so the first one is Burnt Umber and this is Windsor & Newton. Um, I suggest you get a Burnt Umber. This is like just a pretty standby um, color to use. Um, that's the brown that I use. So the next one is Vernadan Hue. It's like a green and um, once again, Windsor and Newton, and I like this brand a lot. It works pretty well. Um, and the next two, just because I have them on my stash, and as I replace them, I'm going to try different brands. But um, right now, I still have the Hansa Yellow Medium, and it's a yellow. And then I have this, I can't ever say this word, so please forgive me, Quince. Sardone Rose. So if you see that up here, it will be in my list below of all the different um, ones I use and the paper I use, 4x6 Canson um, paper, 140 pound. Last night I was playing around with my cousins and I did a 90 pound. It was difficult to get the results I wanted when you don't have the right supplies. So 90 pounds, not very happy. I love my 140 pound. Um, it holds more water, you can do a lot more, and you don't have to um, worry about it just soaking up weird. So this is the painting I did, and you could see, yeah, I got a black eye, but, you know, the color of his eye is black. I did that with those four colors, and I'm going to show you how, how you can get all these hues, that little orange feather that I put in there, that's four colors I just showed you and I want you to be able to learn when you're painting that less is more you can make your own colors and makes it better so when I did this if you don't have these exact colors this is a cool red so use a cool red this is a cool yellow and a cool green and this brown is more of like a warm well it might be actually a cool brown I'm not sure about that this is just just get just get the burnt umber. It's totally worth your investment. All right, ready for this video? Happy painting, yeah! I wanna see what you do. Facebook, Instagram, show me what you do. I would love to see anything that you do. Thanks. All right, here we are. We're about to begin to do the hummingbird that I showed you earlier. Now I have mine up here for reference. Um, drawing the hummingbird is a little bit more challenging just because I need to get it into the paper. 
um, without making it too big. Sometimes I have the issue of making it too large. And what I don't want to do with you guys is keep coming in here and erasing. And so I'm already erased it once and then started re um, recording again. But as you can see, I'm just going in here and I made like a very like curved line here and kind of curved line here. And I'm gonna make another curved line here for the wing. And I'm gonna make another kind of curved line that goes up and then out. I'm gonna put in its beak like this. Now, my hummingbird probably isn't exactly anatomically correct. We've all talked about this before and how I feel about my drawings is I do what I feel looks good and we go from there. Now this is just the base. Start one curve here, another curve here, and you kind of got a, this elongated half circle, another curve here, and another one here, and then we've got the pointed beak. My beak's a little bit short compared to the other paintings I did. Uh, but that's okay. Um, it's just going to be how I like it. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of guidelines in here to, to see where I'm going to exactly put my, my lines of color. And this just helps guide me as I paint. Now I, when I was doing this, I looked at a bunch of different photographs of hummingbirds and that's how I, um, came with the one that I painted so it's not like any just kind of went with it and put the texture in as you can see in this one um, I put the texture here and here for its tiny little feathers and I went in here and made the long feathers so this one's pretty quick so hopefully we can do this pretty quick and easy and painless for you um, I want to make shorter videos because I know when I was starting out I wanted as short as videos possible now I'm gonna go in here and wet it where I'm going to do some color. And I'm just going to do its body right now. I don't want to do the wing because I don't want the paints to mix. And so I'm just going to put in water all over the hummingbird. And when you're looking at your paper, if you look at different angles, you can kind of see where the water is at with the way it reflects with the light. It's kind of hard to see in this video, so just take my word for it that I'm kind of leaning over the side and putting in the color. So I'm going to take my green, just a really bright green, and I'll tell you uh, the name of it later and, and put it in the list, but I'm going to go in here. This is for the hummingbird's back. Just doing some green here, and then some on the base of its body. And above by its head and I'm just doesn't need to be exact or perfect just putting it in because I'm just doing the base color of the hummingbird and then what I'm gonna do is come in and put in lines later I'm just putting that in I'm gonna wash my brush off and then I'm gonna go in and take my burnt umber just you can't really see on my palette, but it's on the other side over, over here. See my burnt umber? Take some of that, and then I'm going to go through and put on the base of the body. Like his belly and behind here. Now under, I don't want to say like his chin, but under his face, this part right here, is almost white on a hummingbird and so I'm just gonna put very light very very small of brown um, amount of color there because that's all I want it to be later on now I'm gonna go in and take uh, my red and mind you if you don't have the same red brown yellow and um, green I have feel free to improv improvise because that's what I did when I was starting and I just used the colors I had and I was pretty happy with the, the results. So hummingbirds have this nice red face, cheeks, and I'm just going in there and tapping it into the, to the 
red a little bit. And I'm letting it mix with the green a little bit because it makes this pretty, almost purplish color. I'm putting it in there. Now, I'm going to go in and I'm going to go back. And as you can see, I'm using, in case you didn't see before, I'm using my number eight brush, my rounded one. I'm going to go in and I'm going to do a light of the hummingbird's wing and the burnt umber. And I'm just going to do just like a coating on here. Because we're, as in the paintings I've done, I did layer upon layer of brown in there to give it that feathery feeling. So I'm going to put my first layer in. As you can see, I'm just putting it in there. And then I'm going to go in and take my number four brush, my round one. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of the burnt umber. And I'm going to put its beak in just the base of it and then I'm gonna have the brown wrap up just a tiny bit now I'm gonna pause this video and I'm going to blow dry it because I'm you don't want to see that so just give me a second all right I'm back so I dried it. it was already pretty much dry by the time I got my hair dryer plugged in now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take some more of my green that I was using and I'm gonna go in and just start doing feathers so you can do dabs you can do a little bit of longer lines do whatever you're feeling on each of the paintings I did it a little bit different just to see how each of them would look so this one's not gonna look like the other ones I necessarily did either so I'm just going in and putting in the hummingbirds feathers on um, as you can see I also put his eye in here earlier too and it doesn't matter if you color over it, but I like to keep it open so I can kind of see where it is later on when I do decide to put his eye in. Now the hummingbird, its color is kind of changes in this part with the yellow. So I'm going to put in a, a yellow in there, but feel free to leave that out if you don't like it. It's just kind of what they, what they look like. And then I'm going to take a little bit of more of my green and just do some long swooshes for its backside. It looks like I did didn't do enough pigment in there. Now under its wing it has some shadowing so I'm gonna go in here later on and put some more dark color there. I'm gonna grab my yellow and put a few specks of yellow in there to kind of represent where the, the color changes are happening. And so I'm going to go in there and put like a little dab here and there because that's kind of how it looks when I look at all the pictures of different hummingbirds. Got that yellow in there. Now I found out today that July is World Watercolor Month and so I'm going to encourage you to do some painting with me. Try some paintings, do your own, have some fun. And um, they're trying to raise funds to help kids get more art supplies. Now I'm going to go in and I'm taking my burnt umber and I'm going to go in and I'm going to try not to pick up too much of it because I just want to do some light feathering in here like little lines of its, of its fur. And it's okay if the colors mix because I'm going to go in there and do an, uh, another layer. Now they kind of have these little like little bellies right here that are super cute and that's kind of what this is you see how that I got a little bit more darker color there and then if you go outside it's okay some, some lines in here for the tail feathers now I'm gonna take my bigger brush now and I'm going to go in and grab some more of my burnt umber and I'm going to do that layering we talked about earlier. As you see, I just put a line in here. I'm leaving the very edge so like things bounce, the shadows bounce off. It's usually this part is a little bit. And I'm going to just, you see how I'm just kind of spreading. Now this one isn't next one next round I'm gonna go in and do the finer brush on it but always start 
up here and then push the color out to where its feathers would be. See how it's kind of making those lines in there? I'm going to add a few more lines right here. All right, I'm going to use my, oh, and then I'm my number four brush. And I'm going to take some more of my red and do some feathering up here. Now, if you ever look at a hummingbird, kind of the top of their head is like brown and it's like the color is really mixed together like it is paint. So I'm going to go in and take my burnt umber and put a little bit here and then add just another layer to the beak, a little bit more heavier pigment. And if you don't like something or it's too, like look at my colors got mixed up and it's just blah. I'm going with paper towel and you can just lift it out. And then you can retry again if you don't like it. But just make sure that your paper is kind of dry when you go back in. So I'm going to dry this and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I'm gonna do some more layering. I'm gonna go in and take my burnt umber. I'm gonna go in and put some more. Now I'm gonna be a little bit more fine details with this because I'm, I am only did about four layers and I'm gonna not have them so close together, really blend it in like they did before. And I'm just putting lines in there and kind of going with the flow of, of the bird. And if some of them get mixed in, that's okay. We're gonna do one more layer in a little bit after this. I'm gonna go in and take some more of my burnt umber and do more layering here. With watercolor, you gotta remember that you go from light to dark as you're adding colors because um, that's just the way it works. You can't, it's harder to lift the watercolor, or put lighter on top of watercolor. It's not like oils where oils you start you start dark and then add the lighter. So watercolor is kind of the opposite. And then I'm gonna go in here and add some more details to its feathers over here. Then I'm gonna go in and add some more that yellow. Just cause I want it to almost mellow it out a little bit that I what I put in there. I'm gonna have it going over on this side. Clean my brush, and then I'm gonna get some more of my green. And add some more feathers. Just to give it a little bit more texture. And, and if you like where yours is at right now, when you're painting, just those two layers that you've done and you're happy with it, feel free to stop and then wait or go forward later on. So we're gonna go in here and put a few more lines back on the back. As you can see, it goes out a little bit and that's all right. We are gonna do a little bit of shadowing I always talk about using less amount of colors and I'll show you how to make some some uh, shadowing colors. And I'm going to go in and take a little bit more of my red, just do a few more. And so I'm going to take my green. That I have that I've been using for this painting and use the green you're using and then I'm gonna add some of the burnt umber on it to get more of a grayish shadowing color now I'm gonna show you what this looks like and um, bring in my, my scrap 
You see how I mixed the green with the burnt umber? And it makes this darker color, but do you see how when you look at it compared, it looks like it's gonna work. So I'm gonna add a little bit more green to it. Let's see if I like it. Nope, I definitely like more of the brown in there. And sometimes that's what it is with water coloring is you're just gonna mix, mix, mix to get what you like. And I just want a darker shadowing color that still works. And so I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna keep this here because I got it pretty saturated. And then I'm gonna go in here and kind of add some shadowing underneath its, its wing. I didn't do much research on hummingbirds, but I'm probably assuming that this is a, a male hummingbird just because they tend to be more beautiful. And go in, start adding the lines. Now, remember if I showed you before, if you do higher up on your brush, you have it straight up. And I like that, how it's looking. And then I'm going to add some to its beak. I'm just underneath there. So it looks like it can open its mouth. And I'm going to put a few more layers in here. Now hummingbirds have this. When you're looking at them, right, right here they have this orange feather. And I'm going to try to accomplish that by taking my red and some of the yellow that we've already used in this painting to make an orange. And we're going to put that stripe right in there. And I don't know if it's going to show. Yeah, it does. I'm just putting that one little stripe in there of orange. And I'm... And as, as you know, that I'm consistently using just the four colors. We've got the green, the brown, the yellow, and the red. Those are the only colors we're using, four, four colors. And um, that'll tend to make your painting better. So I'm going to pause this, blow dry it, add its eye, and, and we're almost done. All right, so we're back and I am going to try to do a um, much heavier pigment with my green and my brown to make a black for his eye just because I want to have a, the black, their eyes are pretty tiny and small. And I'm, the more pigment you have or the more paint you have in, um, the darker the hue is going to be. And it doesn't have to be black when I do this, just that illusion that it is black. And as you can see on here, it looks like it's black even though it's a very heavy colored brown. And then I have done four of these paintings. This is my fifth and I'm, oops, sorry about that. I'm gonna add just, I just want to add a little bit of feathering to his, let's see, like his chest. I uh, just want to add just a light. So it looks so white. And then I'm going to go in here and do kind of my my typical, sometimes if my painting is kind of boring or I'm not exactly the most happy with it or I'm just sick of looking at it, is I go in and pick up some of the color on my brush. As you can see right here, it's pretty soppy wet. And then I'm gonna go in here and tap splatters, like kind of in the blank space, so it's, in my opinion, not so boring. But you can leave yours without it too. I've done several without it. And now I'm doing one so you can kind of see which you like better. 
and always use the colors that are in your painting if you start adding too many colors it looks muddy um i was fortunate enough this weekend my cousins came to visit from texas and i found out that um, my um, cousin's daughter also loves watercolor and she had this huge palette full of colors and she let me play and it was really difficult for me to use it because I'm so used to making my own colors with my own shadowing and just making um, my own color palette but it was really interesting to try a palette with a lot of different colors can't say I loved it because I kind of like having the least amount of colors makes it um makes the painting much more cohesive. All right, and then I'm gonna take my green and put some green splatters in there. I'm not gonna do brown because brown's kind of boring. <laughs> All right. Here. And if you don't like it on your on your um actual hummingbird, just go in. Can blot it out. And voila, 20, 22 minutes. You made yourself a hummingbird. Might be a little bit longer because you're going to have to use your dryer to let it dry. But hope you enjoy this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up on my YouTube page. And you can always check me out on Facebook, Little Frenchie. And if you have any comments or suggestions, I would love to hear them down below. And if you do decide this painting, I would love to see it. Happy painting, everyone.